safe job here had been caved in quite hard here this is a drift car and um they just want a half decent job done to it so it's only going back out on the track it doesn't have to be 100 percent perfect but these are big uh fiberglass over fenders so they they've actually done quite a good job on it a lot of the time when people do it they just slap it on over the top and you can still see the edge but it's all been filled up and it looks quite nice Decent paint job on it, better than most drifters, so we still want to do a nice job on it. Um, we've just uh, pulled out what we could inside there and then just put loads of filler and fiberglass first and then filler. And um, we saved this door. She bought another door, but it was actually worse and it was going to be more time and effort to paint that one and then blend the guard than what it was going to be to repair this one. That's the blue door here and it was... Um, pretty far gone like all these front edges here are all lipped over and all down the back there there's damage all over it and then you'd have to strip that door out pull the whole door off this car and change all the fittings over so for today we'll just get this into primer um, we're just going to swing the door we decided we'll be able to do that for both prime and paint um, we're not actually going to pull it off save a bit of stuffing around there so with this car, I actually didn't get any footage or photos of it before they started repairing it. I was just too busy doing other stuff. But um, I didn't even do any of the repairs on it. I just got it ready for primer and then primed it up and pretty much took over once they'd done the repairs on it. I did go around and remove any of the deeper sanding scratches from where they'd used some 40 grit and 80 grit to sand the filler down with. I went over the top of that with some 180 grit and then around the edges I used a bit of 320 grit and then some red scotch bright to make sure that all my primer is going to stick to the original paint under there. And as you can see next up I'm giving it a good mask up although obviously I did give it a blow down first to remove all the dust and then put it in the booth and yeah just masking this up just to swing. Um, I decided to cut out most of the footage of the masking but on my RAW channel, I included the entire masking stage of this from start to finish. So if you're interested in seeing exactly every step of how I do this masking, go over and check out my other channel where I've got just raw footage, uh, unedited basically. And I might just put a bit of music over the top or something like that. But uh, yeah, there's a few uh, things that I can't just put in all of my videos. It takes too long for me to narrate but there's still some good little pointers that you can pick up on that channel. This kind of masking really used to uh, be quite difficult for me. However, the breakthrough moment was when I just realized, just mask the door as if it's the door and mask the car as if it's the car. So all you do is you cut that one slice out from where the uh, plastic wants to go over the door, pretend that's not there, and then you tape it up in the front edge there, and then just throw another piece over the door and mask them as two separate panels, as simple as that. Ready to get some primer on this beast. Just gave it a good mask up, made sure that I'm able to get all the insides and the outsides at the same time because we're not going to pull the door off, as I said before. We've got this uh, rear roof spoiler, I think it is. It goes up the top there. And then a side skirt. Just going to be using the Concept HS primer. I like this primer. And air guns are AZ3, 1.8mm. Put about 10% reducer in it. And get this primed up and go watch the grand final. So when I'm priming, I don't like to put my first coat on too heavy. Um, just sort of go medium wet and then you let that tack right off. So you give it like five minutes. Obviously, it's going to depend on how warm it is in the warmer months. Sometimes by the time you've got around and uh, got around all the parts you've got to prime, you can come straight back and then just keep continuing on. So obviously you've got to depend on the size of the job too. But um, yeah, once you've got that first coat down and had that dry out, then you can start putting some heavy coats on. That's all primed up. I ended up giving it five coats just to give us a little bit extra to block into. The insides inside here only got four, but um, there's not really many pinholes left. Uh, I was able to fill up some of the smaller ones, but there's a little one there. Uh, pick them up before I start blocking it. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how it came up. 
Got a little bit of a run there, but that's nothing that won't block out. If I keep that shit up, you guys will start calling me the run man. Guns cleaned out, ready to go home. So we're getting this bad boy painted today. First off, we'll be checking my colour. Couple of little pinholes. Prime didn't quite fill up. I'll put something in there and give it a block down. Gotta paint all this door swinging. It should be pretty fine though. Have to strip this door out. Get that handle out and take the mirror off. So there's been another little bit that I never got told about last week. My partner forgot because he had a hangover on Saturday and uh, had to reprime that bit over here. That's just in 1K. It was just a little bit of a rub through, nothing major. So I just put like three or four coats of 1K on and blocked this, this side down with 180 first. I then hit all the edges with 320 grit. A couple of bits where I cut through, I sprayed a bit of uh, 1K primer over. And then I, after I did the edges with 320 all inside here and that, um, I hit the entire thing with 320 grit just to get rid of those 180 grit scratches. So 320 sort of ended around here. Once I'd done that, I then got some 600 grit on the orbital sander and uh, did all over the blends and over the primed patches as well. My next step is to get 800 grit. Just go around all these edges here. Good thing about this is that it will remove any orange peel, so you're starting again and also sand that top layer off. If you use Scotch Pride, I've found sometimes you're obviously going to leave the orange peel there and uh, it won't cut in quite as far. So this is going to expose all that fresh paint from underneath. I made sure I cleaned the entire panels down first with water. There was no real greasy spots on it, so water was all it needed. Just uh, two clean rags, one wipe water on, and then just to dry it off with a clean rag. I stripped that door out. Pretty basic, really, just a few screws. A couple of nuts behind the door handle. So once I got all the prep work done and I was happy with that, I gave it a really good blow down, a good dust off and wiped it down just with a clean rag. Like you can wipe it down with some wax and grease remover prior to um, masking if you wish. I've found it's an extra stage that really isn't necessary. As long as you just clean those, all the dust off the edges just with a dry clean rag, it usually does uh, well enough. So just going around and uh, edge masking, you don't want any of that sort of touching the exterior panel. When I started my apprenticeship, I was told, I still remember it was in like the first couple of weeks, I was told, you're better off to get a little bit of overspray than have your tape touching the paint to the panel that you're trying to paint. So again, I've just cut the footage out. Um, I didn't include the entire uh, bit of uh, masking because you would have been sitting down watching probably for I don't know, 45 minutes, something like that, maybe even an hour on a, on a job like this where I've uh, mastered all up to swing. Um, it is a little bit more tricky uh, now that I'm doing uh, the paint work, not, not just the priming, because uh, the front edge, and you just got to make sure that the uh, door is swingable and uh, make sure that there's nowhere that your masking is going to hit your fresh paint. So. When you're painting the inside of the door jam, you obviously need the door open, but if the door is fully open when you're painting the door, well then uh, the front edge of that is going to be sitting just behind the guard. So yeah, you've got to make sure all your masking is really nice and tight, um, and obviously not any holes that you're going to get uh, overspray on, your, on the rest of the car. And this bit here really demonstrates what I said before, as you just throw the piece of plastic over the car, and then you just cut that one slice out like you see me doing here. Pretend that door is not even there basically. And then you mask that door separately. Um, and it's really very simple when you think about it. 
but yeah it does take a little bit of time getting the hang of it but I actually really enjoy masking I f find it probably one of my most enjoyable uh, things in spray painting like painting is fun I don't mind prep work I don't mind the whole procedure but uh, well apart from polishing everyone hates polishing but masking is something that you know you can sit, sit in there you get the tunes on and you can just listen to music and yeah I find it a bit relaxing as well it's always good to use a nice sharp razor blade anyone who's battled with blunt old razor blades knows exactly what I'm talking about it's just um yeah a real pain in the ass I also find that masking straight over with the plastic is a lot quicker I find it cleaner neater um, than using the paper so when I started my apprenticeship we always used to put paper over the edge and then get the plastic and tuck that up underneath or tape that around your paper. There was a reason that we used to do it that way and the main reason was that if you went straight over with the plastic like you see me doing here now, um, you'd paint it and then your paint would actually not stick to the plastic so you could get it all based up and then you may be doing the clear coat with a little bit higher pressure and then you'd find that the base coat would actually just start flaking off as you're painting. It may not do that, and then it may just do it when you're unmasking, you get these little flakes of paint landing on top of your freshly painted surface. But um, yeah, the plastic that they've got these days, uh, all of that paint will stick to it. And yeah, this way, it's it's also I've got a static coating, so hopefully, well, the idea is that any of the, uh, the dust and the debris and stuff will sort of hopefully stick to that rather than land in your paint job. But does that mean that we don't need paper anymore? Absolutely not. It still has its place. And as you see on this job here, I still used paper for the door. I could have thrown a piece of plastic over it, but I decided not to. Paper is um, less chance of flapping around, so it's a bit tighter. Um, and there are still loads of times that I do use uh, paper. So you might have a whole car masked up, but then um, you might want to put it over your wheel arch or something, or uh, it's a good insulator. So if you're using the infrared drying lights, well then, yep, I'd use some paper around the edge just to make sure that I'm not going to, say, melt that plastic onto the panel or even melt a tail light or something like that. But that's probably something that most trades, and lots of guys already know that already, but uh, maybe apprentices and the DIY guys, I still like to put those bits of info info in um, and yeah let me know what you guys think of this new style how I've uh, started talking in the booth and on the job uh, rather than doing so much narration if you do or don't like it be sure to let me know of your thoughts uh, positive or negative okay, so it's all prep sold down and ready to start tack ragging get some color on got it all masked up I did just a bit of a soft edge on that line here I'll peel that off once it's painted got this uh, spoiler here all set up I just drilled a couple of holes in there and screwed it down better than having it hang up and going all over the place if I hang it from the roof and we've got it all masked up so pretty tricky masking around here something that I used to struggle with when I was uh, earlier on in my trade but I've just about got it sussed now. So you've got to make all this masking here nice and tight. That's why I decided to use paper this time. Less chance of sort of flapping around. And the worst thing you've got is having it hit here. But I'm happy that when that's closed just there, where it wants to sit there, that I'm still actually able to get right across the front there. That's all not touching either. Just got to make sure that when that's opening, it's not going to be touching on the inside there. Mask it all up and then prep sold it. And then I put this fine line tape on here after I prep sold it. That just um, made sure it was nice and clean and the blue tape, the fine line was going to stick. I'll, I'll put another piece actually around just down the bottom there too. But, um, the guns I'm going to be using this time is just the SGK base coat, which we've got some Standox base coat mixed up. I'm starting to go off the um, the Metalux, oh sorry, not the Metalux, the Concept. Some of their colours, the metallics just don't stand up enough, um, whereas some of the other brands of paint just seem to match quite a lot better. But that um, no mix is probably okay for respray's and 
it's sort of cheap jobs and that, but when you want to make sure the colour's 100% right, some of them you just can't do it. So, um, for clear coat, I'm going to be using the Segola. I had a follower of mine lend me this gun just for a week, just to see what it's like. I used it once last week for uh, base coat and clear. It's actually not a bad gun. Uh, fairly light, it's got a good feel in the hand. Uh, it seems like it's quite well made. So this is the LXT clear cap on it, 1.4 mil. It did seem to go a little bit slower than the um, Sardajet 5000, partly just because that thing is an absolute cannon of a gun. Um, but it's definitely a good gun. Um, I'll be doing a review on it soon. Well, probably for this job. Sit down and make a review up. So obviously prior to putting this base coat down, I gave it a good blow down with the high pressure air and one of the yellow tack cloths, they're my favourite, they're just a bit stickier than the blue ones. I think the blue ones are more designed for the base coat stage, so after you've had your base coat down, you can then uh, tack rag over the top of that with the blue ones, but uh, a lot of the time I find that I don't even need to tack rag my base coat and they the jobs can end up coming out a little bit cleaner if you don't tack rag them. but sometimes you do need to like you as a technician you just got to monitor that i guess and it won't take long uh you do a few jobs you're like man that's got dust all through it i should have ran the tack rag over that one uh but yeah if something just doesn't look right uh if you can see like some dusty sort of dry spots in your base coat well then yeah that's something that i'll probably tack rag or you're doing a, a really coarse metallic or something like that and you can just see the blends just not looking right but well, then sometimes i'll actually tack rag it before I put the um, blending aid down, which I'm gonna be using in this job as well. Um, it's just like base coat stabilizer, NM60 is the one that I'll be using. I usually like to put that through my clear gun as well, because obviously it's it's not uh, 2K clear, but it's still something that you don't want tainted with a touch of base coat from your base coat gun. So this is a quick look at it after the first coat of base coat. Yep, we've got terrible coverage. I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, and also had a couple of little bits of silicon or fish eyes show up. No need to panic. It's, but it's a base coat stage. If you're getting it in your clear and you're getting these big bits like that in your clear, yep, you've got problems. But all I needed to do was just get the air out of the spray gun, dry it down, and then dust a, uh, another coat or two over it that went and then I'm able to put some wet coats on and start getting some coverage. Yeah, the solvent based base coat, um, it may not cover quite as good as the water base, but it dries a lot quicker. So uh, it's cheaper as well. Um, I know there's lots of people that love their water base, but um, I'm still a solvent man. I haven't used much water base. That will be changing in the future. I'm off to Thailand soon. The guy that I'm gonna be working with over there in Thailand, this Canadian guy, he's, um, became friends with the guys from PPG. They've actually said that we're more than welcome to come up to their spray center. So they've got a spray booth there in Bangkok. Said you're welcome to come up. All you have to do is use our products. So uh, I've heard that some uh, some of the latest PPG Enviro base and some of their clears and primers are like right up the top now. They're actually over overtaking some of the German brands. So I'm really looking forward to that next chapter. And hey, I could be a convert. I could just be like, man, what was I doing with all that solvent base all those years? But um, at this point, it really comes down to money and uh, it is a fair bit more expensive for water base. It's not like I'm scared of it. It's not like it's this new thing that I'm uh, afraid of, I'm sure I would pick it up in no time. It really does just come down to the money. So some people would obviously make the argument that you get better coverage so you'll actually save on materials. Um, look, 99% of the jobs aren't reds like this, which are renowned for poor coverage. Some of the yellows and also some of the greens. Apart from that, you use a bit of a ground coat, something that you've already had sitting around uh, in, in the shelf from the previous job. You use that up and you'll be able to actually run a, your paint shop cheaper on solvent, I believe, anyway. At this point, depending on the kind of shop you're uh, working in as well, um, if you're on a high flow shop, well then maybe you might be better off with some of the uh, latest water bond. Um, look, at the end of the day, I'm not the be all and end all of spray painting. Some of you guys may disagree, some may not. But um, yeah, for DIYs, I would really highly recommend getting some uh, solvent if you can in your area. I know some places in America you can't even get it, 
But um, here in Australia, it doesn't look like it's going to be going anywhere in a hurry. Uh, I find it a little bit easier to use. You have the risks, obviously, of uh, fry-ups and swelling, but most of the time these days, uh, that's the thing in the past. It still does happen, but it's mainly if you're going over acrylic paint. Even some of those like quick dry enamels or look, some acrylics are fine to go over, some are just terrible and uh, I'm not to know which ones will or won't work until you go and start putting some base coat over and you'll find out as you go, the hard way. Third coat of base coat and that's covered. Uh, I'll just leave that for maybe another 10 minutes again, come back in. Give it all a bit of a tack rag down, especially over those blend areas, and whack that blend in clear in my clear gun. Do my blends and mix them clear up. So as I was mentioning before, sometimes you do have to tack rag your base coat, and the main reason I was doing it is because it's pretty coarse metallic and because of those blends as well. So if I was putting color over the entire panels, I probably wouldn't have uh, worried about doing this, but because I had to do these blends and I wanted this uh, blending clear to lay down nice and without any contamination of the overspray underneath. So yeah, just, just give those uh, blend areas just a tack rag and decided I didn't need to go over the entire thing. You may find out that your base coat's still a little bit tacky and then have your tack rags sink into your base coat. Yep, I've had that happen before, that sucks. So I've had a few people like that, they're like, what the hell is this blending clear stuff? Like, why are you putting clear down uh, and then you're putting base coat over the top of it? It's just clear base coat, that's all it is. So as I said before, it's NM60 is the one I'm using. Just about every single paint system I have ever used has a transparent base coat as a tinter. They will also have another product that is specifically designed for it, but it is just exactly the same. Like some of these stabilizers, they might have a little touch of yellowness to them, but by the time you've thinned it down and you've got such a thin coat over there, um, it's not enough to change the color. And especially if you keep it off the front edge of the panel, so you don't put it too wet right up to the edge of the panel, but then there's not gonna be any color difference. And uh, if it's an inch or two off the edge of the panel, you're not gonna see it by the time you've got clear coat over there anyway. That's my experience anyway. Um, yeah, so if you look, if you type in 55B500 Glazerate to a Google search, that will just show you why I call it blending clear, because the Glazerate brand have something called blending clear used for this specific purpose it's just transparent base coat that is designed to do blending with i used to use glazerate so i've just been in the habit of calling it blending clear sorry for any confusion around this topic it's been something for quite a while that people have made a bit of a mention to i've been meaning to make a video dedicated just to blending and stuff like that um and the products that i use but I obviously do my best to answer any comments uh, and questions that people do leave and most of the time I'm able to uh, help you out. Obviously I can't get to everyone, I'm not Superman, there's only one of me and I am most of the time busy at work as you see me here. If I'm not, I'm making videos and they don't make themselves. I was gonna say I've also got a life but I don't really, painting is my life. I won't be including the clear coat stage in this video. Reason being that I did end up doing a review and demonstration on that Segola 4500 Extreme spray gun. So go and check out the other video if you do want to see the clear coat stage as well once you finish watching this one, obviously. So that's the base coat down, blended out quite nice. Sort of just a medium wet coat for that last coat. I reckon by the time I've cleaned that base coat gun out, mix some clear up, that'll be just about right to put some uh, clear on. So it looks good overnight. It's dry, first thing in the morning now. I'll be giving that an unmask and putting those parts back on. Give it a wash up for the owner and um, she'll be right to pick it up. Probably just run the buff over this bit here. Silly me, got a bit of a run there, but there's enough clear there to um, be able to polish that out. 
Concept clear is okay for a cheap clear. And the Segola went quite well, quite happy with how this gun performed. It was going a little bit slow until I wound that uh, fan in a quarter and I found that sped it right up <coughs> because um, you're concentrating the rather than having a big fan that it's trying to get all that paint out of you're just closing it up a little bit so it's pushing that little bit more paint out and I found um, I was a lot happier with how it was going after we closed that fan up a touch so here it is after I gave it a bit of a tub up, I gave it all a bit of a polish. There was one or two little spots that I just uh, denibbed a couple of large bits of uh, dust out. And then I cut that bit of a run from the pillar. You can see a little bit of a shadow still there, but um, a bit of a shadow, shadow run. But for what it is, it's a drift car. She was absolutely wrapped with it. I was pretty happy with the work that we'd done with it and we made a couple of bucks out of it everyone's happy um i've decided to include a little bit of footage here at the very end of just giving it a bit of a rev up um it's i think it sounds a bit rough it's uh, dropped a cylinder or something but i think it's a sr20 either way it is one of the better looking drift cars getting around it's a female owner dory garo i think that's japanese for drift girl so, or something like that i've been told and yeah, I was here, she's actually really quite good. So if you see her getting around in the Perth area, you'll know that that's the one that the gunman painted. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.